Hey everybody, another little mini vlog here. Uh, I was just kind of uh, rapping with some friends of mine who are also YouTube and podcast creators and stuff. And we got into a little bit of a discussion. I thought I would kind of ramble on just a little bit about it. Uh, so I will put a link to this video uh, below once this goes up uh, from Uncle Adam at Tabletop Minions. Uh, he did a video, I think two weeks ago, uh, about uh, specifically like Warhammer, Wargaming types of stuff, myths. Uh, for wargaming and he had a couple of figures in there that I thought was interesting and so we were kind of uh, Debating some of that and also throwing in some other sort of metrics So I think it was either last year or the year before collectible card games like magic and Pokemon They pulled in 745 million dollars of revenue board games pulled in 495 so almost 500 million uh, Mini war games he had down as 355 million and he references his sources in his video so you can go watch that But so mini war game was 355 Role-playing games was only 80 million Now his figure for mini war gamings war games included like D&D &D miniatures and Pathfinder miniatures I'm pretty sure so I think in my opinion though that whatever that number is of those figures should be in the role-playing game category because that's why people buy those figures I think Although some people might buy them for Frostgrave, so stuff like that uh, for minis agnostic style of game. So there's probably some fuzzy room between the 355 for minis down to the 80 for role playing game. But just to summarize: collectible card games 745, board games about 500, mini war games about 350, and role playing games 80 million. But then if you look at the like the online content communities and different YouTube channels and stuff. The Critical Role has like one point some million subscribers and it's probably like the biggest sort of tabletop, you know, analog gaming channel out there. Uh, and they're, you know, they're just kind of blowing everybody else out of the water. So that obviously, there's some other draw there with kind of like, I guess you call it like the star power, you know, their voice actors, their acting, the production values are really high. And there's something probably theoretically more engaging about watching a uh, story unfold in a role-playing sense than somebody talk about a board game <laughs> Anyway, so you know, I'm just kind of guessing at that But there is a little bit of that star power quality there and they kind of came from geek and sundry So just kind of interesting thing but board games is at 500 million and role-playing games is at 80 call it Maybe a hundred million if you throw in the miniatures and stuff. I don't know uh, Now granted you don't need a lot of stuff to play a role-playing game. You don't need anything more than probably your D&D 5th edition manual and then that's it and then you're into role-playing games and probably you know if you're into some other ones too like the Pathfinder manual whatever uh, but with board games like if you're into board games you buy multiple board games probably at least a dozen um, up to hundreds and some people buy thousands so that income you know that revenue generation is there now if you compared like the YouTube channels of miniature gaming which is largely a warhammer focus and board gaming i would kind of give the nod to the miniature gaming channels in terms of like the overall like breadth or the amount of folks in that community if you look at the top and mini gaming channels like mini war gaming uncle adam's channel itself uh miniac uh probably some others i'm forgetting they're up there really high in the hundreds of thousands but so is shut up and sit down so is the dice tower so is watch it played so the top end is about in the same ballpark and you kind of work your down way down out of the hundreds of thousands into the tens of thousands and there's a fair good of good miniature channels and board game channels that are in that sort of 10,000 to 100,000 range uh, you know all over the place but to me it feels like there's a little bit more in the miniature side and that has a lot to do probably because of the painting videos and stuff like that so a lot of people probably in the board game space watch some of those uh, painting style videos <clears throat> and don't touch a game like Warhammer or Frostgate, but are painting their descent minis and their cool mini or not minis So there's a little bit of overlap there But they're about the same so the sort of like the online content creation Is about the same amount of folks and you know subscribers and stuff like that now with magic and stuff I'm not really in tune with any of that community online or even with the role-playing community or online um, Although it seems you know healthy and present in in both cases but it's interesting because we this kind of dovetails into talking about the community. And board games, I think, for the most part, don't seem to be played like at a location as part of a community. Like a healthy uh, shop won't really necessarily have like a big board game club kind of thing. At least the shops around here and the few other shops that I've been around to, they're mainly, mainly magic and or 
Warhammer slash, you know, whatever else. Whereas the miniature gaming is not something you typically do at a home, which is what the board game stuff happens, like a home or somewhere like that. Um, now we have, my group's played at shops before, um, you know, but I think the preference is not to. We're not currently playing at a shop, although we're coming out of COVID and stuff. So, but I think the inkling is not necessarily to, you know, pick, pick the weekly group up back and start playing at a shop. Uh, it's try to, but it's it's hard to kind of you know arrange this right now. So I'm a little bit kind of waffling on that. But I think for the most part we were trying to play uh, at folks' homes, and I I think that is the uh, you know most people's intent. But I could be wrong there. I mean it's just purely anecdotal. So I was just kind of curious. I was just kind of sort of spitballing, and we we're trying to sort of pin down how these communities are working because the online community is is what it is. That's just this big behemoth of of a mess of, of people and stuff. And it's just a lot of noise. You can't really gauge somebody's online community. Other than like, you know, YouTube subscribers and stuff like that or followers on somebody's Twitter account. Um, but the numbers are interesting. The magic thing is, is strange. I mean, is magic really that much bigger than the board games and miniature games and RPGs? I mean, but magic is something that people play, I think, at home and in the shops. And RPGs, we do see a lot of people playing RPGs in shops, but I think most people play at a home and stuff like that. So it's hard to gauge that that full breadth of, of the numbers. So the only thing you can really look at here is the money spent, I guess. And I'm not even sure this topic matters. It's just kind of an interesting idea to see how uh, this style of hobby and these multiple hobbies, the card games, the miniatures, the board games, and the RPGs, are sort of slowly uh, you know, becoming part of what you might call the mainstream. And everybody's always talking about how board games are, you know, they're becoming part of the mainstream. But isn't, I mean, Magic is part of, is the mainstream, I think, you know. Um, and Warhammer and, you know, Frostgrave and all those miniature games, I think that's that's about, about where board games is at. I mean, it's a little bit less in terms of the dollar amount. But a lot of people, when they play these war games, they don't really spend as much money as I think people think they do. Because you can get one or two armies and be into that for a couple of years and not really buy a bunch of stuff. Whereas if you're into board games, you know, a lot of people buy lots of games and don't necessarily play them all the time. Whereas you probably spend less. Now, you're spending more on a one game. If you just, you know, you just had one army in Warhammer, you'd be spending a few hundred bucks on the one game. But you theoretically be going to the shop and playing it uh, relatively frequently. So anyway, it's kind of interesting sort of... Uh, quantifying thing to sort of look at in terms of what is the level of health uh you know and this is almost like a financial view of that but it's kind of an interesting kind of thing where you think about well this people are in this category and those people are in that category and you know this is the equation of that and so it's just kind of interesting. I was like well these all seem like they're really in the same ballpark and there's a lot of bleed through like I do both I do board games and miniatures and a tiny bit of RPGs and rarely a collectible card game but i sometimes do so anyways it's kind of a quick ramble and uh probably pointless and worthless but i figured let's just any comments um i mean i'm curious what people's thoughts on this and maybe there's some other metrics that give you a better sense so anyway thanks